The following program is for mature audiences only. None of the information provided is intended to be medical or any other professional advice requiring licensing through any regulatory agency. It is for entertainment purposes only. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Amy Satori. I'm an intuitive spiritual counselor assisting in raising the vibration of our planet. I was born with extraordinary gifts, experienced enlightenment for six months years ago, speak light language, and channel a being called Celeste who is an ambassador for a galactic council of 60. I am able to scan your energy field for emotional blockages and talk to or aid in the healing of your organs using Qigong energy healing. I can also help you make decisions, talk to your pets, deceased loved ones, and your friends and family's higher selves. I can help you navigate your relationships and answer pressing questions in your life by talking with the unseen world. I use these skills I've developed to translate the images, feelings, impressions, and messages I'm given while tuning into you and your situation. I work Thursday through Saturday as a psychic for the Lighthouse Bookstore downtown Boulder, Colorado, and conduct remote readings all over the world. You can order a private reading from my website at amysatori.com. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow me here on Podbean, Instagram, my 1111 Twin Flame Forum on Facebook, and YouTube. Set a reminder in your phone to call live on the show any Sunday, 530 Pacific, 630 Mountain, 730 Central, or 830 Eastern to ask me a question, receive a blessing, or have me do some energy work on you. So my friends, without further ado, let's get to today's show. And thank you for listening to and watching the Satori Show, you guys. <laughs> it's been an interesting week, that's for sure. I wanted to just mention a few things before we get started. Um, I, I, this, this might be a fun little experiment to do to to work on control issues. You know, everyone, everyone has them. So, <laughs> pretty much, if you have an ego, yeah, you got control issues. So. Try this experiment. The next time somebody really irritates you or something really bothers you and you're tempted to want to say something to the person, don't and see what happens. Um, if you go to correct them or tell them don't do that or you're trying to rescue them from something or tell them to stomp on their brakes or you like whatever, whatever it is that you feel like saying, um, don't. <laughs> And and see what happens. It is just it'll 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 really surprise you if you make this a practice. Have a little faith in the universe. You know the person will probably be okay, and they'll probably do uh, just about what you were about to tell them to do, which is funny. So start to trust a little more, you guys. <laughs> um, also, <clears throat> um, the two different types of readings that I do are, I mean, the remote readings that I do anyway. I do domestic, so within the United States, and I do international. So if you guys order a domestic reading, it gets, uh, I will call you, I will call you, and um, you don't need anything because it gets recorded, but the, there's a funny little glitch about it. When I call you, you'll say, hey, hello, or whatever you say, and then you're going to have to wait about three or four seconds of silence before I say hello back, <laughs> just to warn you guys. Um, so some people have been like, well, oh, she's not answering. And then they hang up and I'm like, dang it, I have to do it again. <laughs> so, um, also if it's an international, um, remote reading, then I will send you a zoom link just a few minutes beforehand. So, um, check your email. And if you don't have zoom yet, go ahead and download it now. If you have, um, a scheduled reading with me, if you would please, cause that would save us some time too but I always leave a little bit of time between consultations just in case. But if you're like probably seven minutes late for our call, an international call, I'm just going to reschedule you because I'm not going to sit there and wait for, you know, for a long time for you guys to, to respond while I'm sitting there on zoom waiting for you. <laughs> okay. Um, um, if, and also, if you guys, um, a, a lot of these calls that I get on the show are about true love. They're about twin flames, soul flames, soulmates, love at first sight, all those wonderful, lovely things. And so if you guys don't understand those concepts, if you're listening to this going, what is she talking about? Divine masculine, twin flame, like what? Then watch that video called the different types of true love. And I'm going to put that in the 
both. I'll put it on Podbean, which is www.thesatorishow.podbean.com, and or I'll put it in the YouTube video down in the description. Okay. Um, oh, and also, if you want proof that the masculines are starting to come out of ghosting, you guys, go to my Instagram, follow me on Instagram, because that is where I post the latest updates through word of mouth of the Divine Feminine's report. Yes, I've heard from him. Yes, he's finally confessed. He's loved me for years or um, watched me for a long time. And now he's, you know, he's got feelings for me and he's finally um, admitting those things. So, yay. And if you want some encouragement and, you know, it's so hard because it can be so discouraging <laughs> when these guys are ghosting and when you guys are in the separation period, you know, you just doubt everything. You go through so many different phases of growth, really. But um, it's so nice when you can be in a community where you get confirmation. The people who haven't heard from their person for a really long time are, are hearing from them, too. So, um, 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 um. Okay, so more and more people are coming to me saying, thank you so much for that celebrity video that you did. So if you guys haven't watched that and you have a celebrity counterpart, a celebrity true love, then definitely watch that video because it's been very helpful for a lot of people. And they've come forward and said that a lot of things that were that were mentioned in there were very helpful. And nobody's talking about this stuff. So um, if you guys have, I might do another video in the future. So if you guys, or having, um, you know, if you have questions that I didn't address in there, please email me, amysforreal at gmail.com, the number four. And um, just let me know your questions, and I'll put together, like, another video or just talk more about that with you guys. Because um, a lot of you are either going to become famous yourself, and it's starting to happen for you, or, you know, the person that you love is, or both of you are. So congratulations. <laughs> You're going to see in some upcoming readings. The collective readings that I put out every week for True Love, they, um, they're they recorded about, geez, at, at this point it's been like probably three or four weeks in advance. So I get to see what's going to happen in the future coming up here. And it, it's pretty lovely, you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, also I wanted to mention this too. It's like, if you guys aren't a part of this whole celebrity thing, don't worry about it. And it's just, you know, I'm sure you look up to your divine masculine the same. Like, he's a star in your eyes. So, you know, don't don't feel like you're being left out or anything by any means. And also, if, if you do run into a celebrity or you like a celebrity or anything like that, I just want to be the one to say, do not act like they're anything different than anybody else. They are just a normal person with a job that happens to be with a bunch of cameras around them. So you don't don't act like you know who they are because you've watched them because, you know, they're acting. And also, don't follow them. Don't make them feel uncomfortable. Don't, you know, don't be weird. <laughs> don't be creepy because... There's just no reason to see them any different, and and most of most of the people who are watching my channel, they're feminines, and they're much more mature than that anyway. So I just thought I'd put it out there just in case a random person watches this and they have done that. It's like stop it, stop all stalker activity. I don't care who you're stalking. If you're stalking your masculine, stop it. <laughs> don't stalk anybody. You know whatever. If if. If you are meant to run into them, you're going to run into them, period. So just, um, you know, don't don't be weird. <laughs> They're just normal people. Um, also, oh, it's so funny because I've, I've, ha- I've been having more and more. I'm getting so busy at the Lighthouse. I'm there every Thursday through Saturday. And by the Lighthouse, I mean the Lighthouse bookstore in Boulder, Colorado, downtown Boulder. Um, I can always tell... The like the people who are coming in off the streets, a lot of them are are foreigners and they're they're coming in as tourists. Um, but I can tell the normal people who just kind of walk in and don't have a clue who I am, and then the people who watch me here on YouTube. <laughs> I came out of the, I came out of the bathroom the other day, and this ga- this gal goes, oh! <laughs> I went, oh YouTuber. <laughs> it was really cute. But um, yeah, I am getting really busy, you guys. So if you if you want to get a reading at the lighthouse and come talk to me in person, try to get um, try to get an appointment set beforehand. Otherwise, you'll get knocked out, most likely, because 
even the walk-in start filling in the spaces where you know, the people who signed up, um, you know, left a gap. Anyway, all right, so there's all the news. We have a caller, and we will get to this right now. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi, hi. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Uh, I'm feeling a lot of emotions up here, so I don't know if that's the same with every other kind of divine feminine right now, but... Um, oh, yeah. I Yeah, there's like, a lot of that going body. around right now. <laughs> it is so heavy and so, like, onset. Like, I thought I was feeling really good on the 8-8, eight, eight, like the lion's gate, and I was like, yeah. oh, this is awesome. And then the second day, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this just felt so heavy. And then um, I actually think I would sent you a link to somebody that, and I won't say the name just for now, but somebody that I kind of learned a lot from through the Twin Flame, and I met, or I came across from you through okay. them. And I know, who, I know who this is. I know what okay. you're talking about. Okay, yeah. And so, like, I think that just with the emotions that I was already going through totally threw me off kilter, and I was questioning then this whole, like, really. Ooh, I need to watch now. that. Like, do I? I okay. didn't watch. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Sorry. Was it a Debbie it, it, Downer? As a, well, it was, it was like, again, saying that they were on the path for so long and they were supporting it and saying, that, you know, eventually, yes, obviously it's union with yourself, but that ideally you come into union with your significant other and then kind of basically turning a three or 180 and saying, nope, this isn't the direction that, you know, you could ever, you could never come into union happily with that person, let it go. They are there to trigger you to kind of be your best self and, you know, move on, find somebody else, like your soul flame, soulmate, whatever. And so mm-hmm. I think, again, just being who it was, who told me it, and knowing that, like, I found you through them and all this stuff like that brought up a lot of kind of questioning. And then, um, well, I, 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 I will say that, all of that. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a little, um, there was a little, a little thing that happened um, a while ago, um, I could, two, three months ago or something like that. Um, yeah, there was just a big, there was just a, I would say a a very much a big, um, happening that, um, that kind of turned everything around for her. Okay. So she's not, she's not the same person she was a few months ago, as far as I'm concerned. I didn't. Right. So I don't, you know. You probably, those of you who, I mean, well, we're not going to talk about who that is, but it's like the, those of you who, 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 who know, those of you who know who I'm talking about, or what I'm talking about, um, you'll, you'll have seen that there was, there have definitely been a lot of changes in the last few months and I have not understood it. I've, you know, right. she's not been talking to me about whatever she's been going through, but, and that's, and that's fine by me. <laughs> yeah. So. I am just on my own path and so is she and so she can, you know, and I, 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 if she's about growth, then we're on the same team as far as I'm concerned. If she's right. about loving yourself, then, then great. That's awesome. So I'm sorry that, I'm sorry that you felt discouraged by that. Yeah, I think, um, I think, so then it, it kind of put me on a different trajectory. So I was like, okay, like, do I let things go right now with my divine mask on because, like energetically I feel so separated from him right now um I sent an I miss you which I think I energetically went a little like there's technically yes nothing wrong with what I said but I didn't feel like it was the right timing but I sent it anyway so I think he kind of pushed back or retreated even more um but then I was like okay let's put back Bumble on and see if I can find and date someone but I don't feel like I'm even energetically at a spot to like ever accept anyone else so then I'm like, how do you mm. ever find a soulmate or a soul flame if you don't, Aww. if you can't even, like, it doesn't even seem worth your time to, like, invest or message yeah. someone because you're like, but they're not them. Like, it's just, Oh, yeah. I totally, I don't know. yeah, I, I so get it. I so get it. But I kind of have an advantage in a way because I talk to so many people on a regular basis. It's unbelievable. So I have heard the people who have had successful twin flame relationships and make it but I also know what makes it make it, you know? So um, I would disagree that they're, that they're not, you know, meant to be or whatever, you know, I think, I mean, I personally ditched my twin flame a while ago. So I, (laughs) I jumped off that bandwagon. (laughs) So, you know, I don't, I don't want to be with him. 
um, at least at this point, unless something pretty dramatic happens. Um, but that's, you know, we all come to that, um, whether we, whether we choose that person or not, but ultimately, I mean, I've kind of come to a point of surrender of just listening to my intuition, listening to signs, listening to dreams, and just letting, um, whatever label you want to call it, like come in when it's supposed to. But I will say that I have seen that when somebody in your position where they can't, they can't move past the person, you're not, and, and for anybody listening to this that doesn't get this whole thing, it's like, it's, it's hard to explain. This person isn't obsessed with this person. It's like they're constantly reminded of them. And they had such a sweet, incredible experience with this person that they can't, they can't forget what a, what a neat connection it was, you know, and they just, and she's right. Like nobody compares to that person in your eyes because it's just such a neat connection. But having been on the other side of it and come to the conclusion that, well, if he, if he's not ready, I, I don't know if I'm willing to sit around for 10, 20 years <laughs> to wait for this person. So I, I gave up and, and surrendered the whole thing and just said, you know, bring me somebody who's perfect for me. And then all of a sudden, um, once I, once I surrendered and I've seen this for several divine feminines in your position, once they kind of gave up and I always recommend surrendering because you don't want to hold on to anything anyway. And, and it, it causes like an essential reset. It's like you, you drop all your defenses and any kind of trying to control and you just stay more in the moment and you're just like, come on, bring it on life. You know, bring me this perfect person for me. And um, you can say all kinds of great affirmations. I have a really good guided meditation, um, Ideal Love. If you guys want to look that up, I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link down below on that. But um, yeah, it's like Ideal Love meditation. You could put in the in the search. But um, it was like it was like the floodgates opened. <laughs> You know, it was like I got all these other really great options. People from the past started coming back. People um, that that I had thought, oh, they're the one that got away or, or whatever. I just kind of started opening up to, I started looking at cards on some of these, some of these people. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, they thought the same thing I did. Like, dang, that was the one that got away. And, um, and the doors just started opening up down some of those other avenues. So, as long as you are staying in a positive vibration and you're feeling like you're trusting in the universe and you're trying to stay happy as best you can without getting all depressed and why isn't this happening? That's the problem that can happen is you can be like, wake up every day, like, why the hell haven't they said anything to me? Why haven't they called? Why don't they acknowledge me? I know what a special connection we have. I know he loves me. You know, why isn't this happening already? Um, but it, when you're in that vibration, you're bring you're br- you're bringing all this lower energy to you that's going to keep you frustrated and keep you stuck. So, whatever you do, make sure that whatever you're thinking is being supportive of you and loving of you, and opening opening doors. Think vastness. Think anything is possible. You know. Can you scan my system and see if there's any like? I think you said the last time like black. I don't know, it's like black sludge or like black energy that's like stuck in your spine or something. I just oh, yeah, those are, talking. those are, um, I'll explain what, what those are. I think what you're describing, I refer to as lower astral entities. Yeah. And I think so. yeah, when and you, when you, you buried us the one time. <laughs> <laughs> like when, when, okay. When you, um, when you go to a public place, or interact with a group of people, or um, drink, take drugs, any number of things. If you're in a negative environment, around negative people, anything like that, there are these little black blobby beings that um, they kind of watch for you to walk in the door. And they say they're, they, they're like, um, their religion is doubt, let's say. So they see you walk in the room, and if they see a similar vibration to what they are about, they'll be like, ooh, somebody who's doubting, yeah. And so they'll, like, jump in your body, and they usually hide in your spine What from what I've seen. Um, and they will, like, overnight, all of a sudden, you'll be kind of a little bit dowdy, and then all of a sudden, you'll be really, really dowdy. And you'll be, like, like night and day. The next day, you're just like, oh, my gosh, just fretting everything. And a lot of people don't even notice it. They just think like that they're falling apart for whatever reason and they kind of ignore it and they keep keep going. They can go years for like this. 
So, um, yeah, if I, you know, I scan your system sometimes when you're, when you're feeling that, and I can usually feel about when it jumped in your body too. And then they, they're really easy to get rid of though, guys. So if you, if you can ever go to like a Reiki master or somebody who does energy work like I do, just have them scan your system for any negative energy and, and pull it out, take it out, any kind of beings, anything like that. So yeah, let me scan you. <laughs> they're say they're all they're saying is that you're overthinking. And 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 you're like I would say you're trying to control things, but it's not so much as it is like negativity. It's like I, I don't understand why this is happening. This sucks. Yeah. So, um as long as you as long as you're kind of stuck in that in that vibration, you're, you're going to stay stuck. So, I would recommend um getting really grateful, getting really grateful for everything in your life, loving everything in your life before you go to bed, you know, touch your heart and just say I love you. I love you so much. And just like say it like a mantra to yourself over and over. I love you. I love you. I love you. And just and to you to yourself, it's really important because when you love yourself, you can love that other person and everybody more unconditionally. So, um, yeah, you could do that to stay in the grateful in a grateful place. Um, and that in itself is going to start opening doors. You can talk to your masculine in the five D. You know, have him sit on the bed next to you or something and be like, hey, I miss you. (laughs) I'd love to talk to you. Let's get caught up sometime, you know. And that kind of thing. You can always, if you feel intuitively pulled to, you could always just give him a call, leave him a voicemail. Just let him know he's on your mind and that you still care about him or whatever. Just don't expect anything back. It's the expectation that's going to, it's going to really hurt. You know, and they do ghost for a reason. It's because, you know, they're not they're not ready. So let me feel into your guy. Okay. Hang on. I feel I it's yeah. I feel him kind of like digging his heels in a little bit, but it's like he yeah. he and some days he feels totally ready, and then some days he's like, oh hell no. <laughs> But I it's feel a good like thing when I sent that text, I felt like he was ready, but then I jumped the gun, and then he retreated from that. Like that, <laughs> that's what I felt energetically happening. I was like, oh, so gosh. Um, so yeah, but they, but they do. They're like, I'm ready. No, I'm not. I'm not. But that's how important you are to them. That's the cool thing. You are so special to them that they freak out. <laughs> they get really scared. And but that you know, if they were to be all willy nilly, oh whatever, let's just do it, you know, then they wouldn't care so much. But these guys like know what they're about to do in their lives, and they know the way that their life is about to change if they do start opening up to you and kind kind of start going down that road. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's the good thing. There is they're they're very thoughtful. They're not so thoughtful to send a nice text and say, hey, I need some time to think about it, but that's because they've been programmed by society. You can't talk about your feelings. Or they've had these karmics that have made them feel like crap if they open their mouth and tell where they're coming from, from the heart. They'll just try to talk them out of their feelings. So, like, the best thing they can think to do is just be quiet, you know, and pull back. So just try, try to do your best to just respect that. If you don't want to wait around, just let go and you'll start seeing other options come in. If you want, if you're like like resigned. Okay. Well, good. I don't feel like I can actually let go. Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, then your objective needs to be to just get happy. Okay. And forget about him and what he's doing. Let him work it out for himself and just like make some really happy changes for yourself. If you have to move somewhere new or get a new job or to do, you know, get an, get another animal, you know, whatever changes you need to make to, to make yourself feel better, like you're starting fresh or like something finally going forward, you know, do that. But um, I think it's cool. I mean, some people are doing that. Some people are like totally sticking by their man's side. And I think that's a, a beautiful thing. I think that that's awesome. If you feel enough hope to think that he could change that quickly, then that's great. And yours, you said, is starting to reach out to you and stuff like that. So that, yeah, yeah. that is a good Can sign if they're communicating with you. 
Yeah. Can I tell Can you what? Tell if um if he has at, like if that paternity test did go through and if he has hopefully found out that he is not the father. Or, oh. Yeah, I'm that story. <laughs> I don't think he's found out yet. I think he's pretty sure he's the dad, though. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he's thinking. I think, yeah. I think he's feeling pretty bad about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's got to go get that done. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's not his. You know, one th- one sweet thing that you can do for those of you in this situation where you just can't even think about anyone else. And you're just like, this is going to happen even if I have to wait a million years. One thing you could do that would be really sweet is is be ro- be a romantic. Think ahead to when you guys come together and do something sweet. Like um, compile some little videos of, of, of your thoughts about him. Like little little snippets here and there. Like, you know what, I was just thinking about that time when we did this and that and the other thing. You know, make a little video like talking to him like a little diary. Or make like a... Send, send him some cards or write him letters or do do something to where some Christmas when you guys are finally together, you can give him this really sweet gift that would make him feel like a million dollars, you know? That would be really cool. Yeah. Posting it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be like, I know you're not talking okay. to me, but I'm just hoping it's because this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, and he'll probably shed a few tears listening to that and how bad he made you feel. But... It's like you you can show that you had faith. You can show that you stood by his side anyway, you know, and that you believed in him, and that'll mean a lot to him. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Thank you very much, Amy. You're welcome. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Shelly? Hi, Amy. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I was just calling to do an energy check with my twin flame and then a blessing if possible. Sure. Okay, hang on. (laughs) He's really excited about something. He's acting like, um, you know how the, how when guys make a touchdown, they throw the football and he, or they spike it and they do that little dance, victory dance thing? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's got that on the brain. Oh. <laughs> so I think he's got something up his sleeve. I think he's kind of excited about something he's about to do. And I think it's going to be obviously romantic. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see what else. <laughs> I see glasses clinking, a romantic dinner at sunset. That boy is thinking a lot about what he's going to do with you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, two weeks ago, I, I confessed how much I love him and how I've loved him all these years. I emailed it oh. to him. And I told him how amazing he was. And, you know, I wasn't oh. expecting anything from him. I just wanted him to know that. So I just good. poured my heart and soul, and um, I feel good about it. I just let it go, and I've let him be. It's just the last few days I've really felt him energetically, and it's like we're not in communication, but I'm just like, what's going on? Because <laughs> I've felt it. Like, it feels good. I just, I, like I said, I haven't seen it in the 3D, so that's why I was like, let me see what Amy finds out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, that talking to the talking to them in the five D can be pretty darn real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they yes, can be it can. there, right in your face, and you guys are having a full on conversation, and it's like, am I imagining this or is this for real? And you're like, this is for real. Like this feels like this would totally be something he would say if he was right here in front of me right now. I just know it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I agree. so. Yeah, the the more you work, and then you'll start dreaming about him, and then you guys are really having a good time. And mm-hmm. so play with that energy, you know. That's that, that's some beautiful stuff right there. It can be frustrating because it's, like, not happening in real life, but um, yeah. it's not your imagination, you guys. Our our minds are very, very powerful. It's all about energy. So you're actually creating that bond um, with him when you're doing that. 
So, so yeah, that's how crazy. But I'm like, this this is happening for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he feels really good. Let me do a blessing and see what comes up for that as well. Okay. Um, I have a friend, she's so funny, she she calls me every Sunday around this time, and I have to text her every time, this is the night that I do my show, and she's like, oh, 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 yeah, every single week, and she's doing it again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so, um, yeah, let me do this blessing for you guys. Aw. Ooh, I'm going to make her my wife. He just said, I'm going to make her my wife. <laughs> Give me Google. <laughs> well, 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 well. Okay, so, all right, let me do the blessing here. Hai mo concha se la kere poona, haliki tim sa se sa, haliki chi sa na pokona alipina. La shikin sa, haliki tim da bombo kos, haliki se na kala padona. I swear it was the that was the weirdest thing. I have never done that before, but I swear energetically I just married the both of you. Wow, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm just talking about getting goosebumps. I just can't explain that. Oh, but. Me too. Me too. And I am a I am a minister. <laughs> Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I could do it. No, he would have to we'll be let here. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that was funny though. You guys were like standing there, like all goofy face, looking at each other in the eyes, and and all teary, and it was just so cute. And then uh, you held his face, and then you guys kissed, and then um, yeah, you guys did the. I mean, it totally was like a really super fast wedding ceremony. <laughs> I love that. Really, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you, usually I get a block to clear when people ask me to do that. And when I do my twin flame check-in service, um, mm-hmm. you know, usually I'll pick up on blocks or past life things that were kind of an issue that need correcting and things like that. But um, that was like, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was like you guys were getting oh, married. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Because, um, That's a very encouraging message. <laughs> Yes, I really, I really, I really feel that, and I thank you for that because um, I've even, like I said, he's been he's been around for the last couple of days, and I've also been feeling because um, he was living with his karmic, and I really think if he's not already moved out, I feel like he's making those moves now, like he's finally gotten that push, right, and I just see. I feel like something's coming. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's watching my recent videos. They're all about like break up with that person if they're not the person for you. Get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I have yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe he's been too. These guys are spying, you know. <laughs> that's so that's true. Good. Yeah, he's sneaky. That's good. <laughs> okay, so let me see how he's doing with that karmic person. Ooh, I see her. <laughs> I see her like so mad, like dragging out her stuff. Like, she is, like, in a, like, throwing a hissy fit. I see her, like, in a, it's like a fluffy blouse, a, little, a fluffy blouse, a tight skirt, a little pencil skirt, and she's got high heels, and she's, like, dragging all this luggage, and she is lecturing and mad and stomping out. So I don't know if that's actually happening real time, like, right now. It could yeah. be symbolic of what's going on, but she's pretty pissed. Mm-hmm. She's pretty pissed. So he must have done the breaking up. Good yes. for him. Uh- Yes, exactly. Amen. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you know, I heard somebody say one time, marry, uh, marry somebody that you could divorce nicely. You know, it's true. Yeah, that is you, true. I never thought of that. Right? It's like if you go through a divorce with somebody, yeah, they're going to be like, I want your money and I want uh-huh. your I'm gonna pay and all that stuff. Is that a person that you really want? Or do you want no, someone who'd be like, hey, a- you just take it all. I'm just, you know, whatever makes you happy, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree I mean, the with difference that. Right I'm there. taking that with me. <laughs> right? Seriously. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's a really true, good though. barometer. And mm-hmm. I, yeah. <laughs> I look back yeah, at that situation. Like, yeah, I could have seen that coming. I'm like, if I would have thought about that, I would have totally <laughs> seen that coming. Because it did go down like I thought it would, you know. Oh, man, you know, I knew they'd be like that. Don't be married mm-hmm. to somebody that would get pissed off if you broke up with them. 
Yeah, so. I, I got divorced and it was not a good a good ending. So he actually showed up after three years last weekend on my social media. I was like, block. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> that is so crazy. I had, I found out, well, <laughs> I hope he's not listening to this. <laughs> My brother called me. He's like, your ex-husband just friended me on Facebook. What's up with that? I was like, I don't know. I oh don't have gosh. a clue. I would do that. Yeah, so, it's something in the energy because I don't have social media. It's just YouTube and Pinterest. So I'm like, you really were looking for me to find me on there. And I blocked him on one, and a few minutes later, he was messaging me on the other. I was like, nope, block. I have nothing to talk to you after three years. Like, bless you. I wish you the best, but we have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> so that's funny. Yeah, exes uh, are coming back on the scene, you know. Just, you know, keep yeah. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Oh, yes, I definitely will, Amy. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for that. This, that was an amazing message. Thank you. Yay. You're welcome. Have a beautiful night. Let me know how it goes. Oh, I sure will. I sure will. You're cool. going to marry us, oh, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. be there. I'm going to be there. Yes, I, don't sure. want to, I don't want to be up there. And I don't want to be the minister. That would scare me. But <laughs> We'll invite <laughs> but you. But I'll be we'll there watching. We'll put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, that will be awesome. If you if you All text right. me or if you if you yeah send me a text and that way I can share it on Instagram with everybody else to encourage them if there's any really cool thing. That happens. Oh, for sure. I have you on WhatsApp, so up, anything transpired, I will let you know. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. Hello, Anonymous. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Great. It's a beautiful Sunday. Yes, it's lovely. I just was calling you, and I was calling to find out, I guess I, you call it an energy checkup. This is my first time calling on okay. the twin flame situation. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Um. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> He's putting a, his attention elsewhere right now. Uh, he's on vacation. Yeah, he's like having a good time. He's I feel like he's just partying it up at the time. I don't think he's thinking about you much. Sorry. <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. But um generally, let I think I was a little too specific there, so let me let me try to z- zoom out on my looking here. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be there. That looks like a really good time. <laughs> sure it it's like it's like he's camping and drinking beer and just sitting around, just having the best talk with everybody. He's he's really having a good time. Um, so generally speaking, can we see what he thinks of her now? Well, actually, do you do you see contact any time in the near future? Well, you know. Time is like 50% accurate just because like time predictions are because, um, and, and I hear this, you know, a lot of, a lot of reports that the things that psychics say, you know, of, well, somebody like me who's really accurate, the things that I say happen like really, really super accurate. Um, well, when you they happen, like telling. yeah, when they happen is 50% accurate. And I'm saying that for the sake of everybody listening to because um, and it all depends on your degree of faith too. So if you go doubting what I say, it's probably not going to happen, or it'll put it off. Um, so having said that, let me just feel mm-hmm. into when he might be contacting you. I get a four, so I'm thinking like four weeks. If it happens sooner okay. than that, great, you know. But I think about four weeks, and ah, uh, huh. he's got a sweetness to him when he comes to you. I That's feel like he's he's going to come with his heart on his sleeve. I think this weekend is going to be really good for him or whatever he's going through this vacation thing. I think it's so good for him. He's like really getting in touch with who he really is and he's getting a real good taste of freedom and happiness and it's like he's not going to want to come out of that and go back into trapped. He's going to come in, he's going to come and search for you because you are freedom to him. You you allow him to be himself, you know. He he can confide in you. 
and I feel like he's going to come to you with his heart on his sleeve. It's going to be it's going to be a beautiful moment. I see him standing at your front door, and oh. um, then just kind of like you opening the door and him just standing there, and it's just huh. like like he's willing to tell you whatever truth you want to know. You know, he's just got one of those looks on his face like, all right, let me have it. <laughs> let me have it. And I want to hear it. And let's get through this uncomfortable part and just get on with the fun. <laughs> cool. So, yeah. Anything else you w- want to tell me? He's saying a very heartfelt thank you. Oh, For standing by my side is what he's saying. For standing by my side. He says, I've always known that you were there and I wasn't believing in myself, but I knew that you were kind of uh, my my cheerleader. He said, I I could hear your voice even when you weren't around. I could hear your support and your love. I could feel it. I could hear it. So thank you. That's really cool. That's he said something about wanting to make you dinner sometime also to thank you. Hmm. Okay. said something about learning how to cook or learning some really good meal he cooks or something. Okay. He wants to impress you. I don't you really have cooking. much else to ask you. Oh, that would be great. And much else to ask <laughs> you because, um, I mean, we've been in separation for a long time. Then we were back in contact. And then, uh, you know, I've seen him off and on. So it's, it's I don't feel a lot of pain or urgency about it. But great. Just, that's just really what I wanted to know. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. Have a great night. Thanks you for too. calling. Bye. Okay, okay, bye. bye. Uh, just so you guys know, too, um, you guys can always call anonymously like that. That's if you don't feel safe. Uh, somebody asked me earlier, she said she's one of those people who's, who's – um, who has a counterpart that's a celebrity, and she's like, you know, I want to call the show, but I don't necessarily want to talk about him and say his name or anything like that. And I was just like, you don't have to. You can make up a name if you want to. I'll still be able to pick up on the energy. So just so you guys know that. Hola. Hello. Hi. Amy? It's Pam. Hi, Pam. Hi. Are you? I have a reading with you this week, but um, my divine masculine did get a hold of me, and it it didn't go well at first. I think we'll definitely move forward, but I kind of what happened? What did he say? Well, he said um, he started out by saying he was all done doing his house and not leading on to anything else and um and I said well that's nice I'm I'm happy for you are you okay and yeah are you okay and um and I I kept it low key waiting to hear from him and then that made him mad and he said so nothing and I said, I'm I'm feeling very guarded right now. I'm 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 afraid to say what I feel because I was waiting he said for that? him. But mm-hmm. wow! And and um, <clears throat> so it kind of went sideways. I and then I texted him in the middle of the night and said, you know, I I love you. I miss you terribly, and I. I, you know, I want you to stay. I don't want you to go away. <laughs> and um, and um, he texted back in the morning and said, I miss you too. But this is the comment that made me go completely sideways and question everything and his motives mm-hmm. and everything. It's terrible. He said, I missed... Um, I miss you, but I worry I can't give you the singular attention you need. And mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so two things went through my head, that the, the karmic isn't gone, like sort of like what we thought, and number mm-hmm. two, or he thinks I'm a needy person when I had to be <laughs> so independent. It's yeah. crazy. So um, I needed, you know, we'll go in depth 
when I talk to you this week, mm-hmm. but I want your help. I but um, I went out for cocktails last night, and I texted him and I just said, "Can we start over?" And he said, "Well, that's what I wanted, but okay, I need your help now. Can you read in?" Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's a really positive thing whenever they reach out, no matter what they say. Um, oftentimes they are. Had you had you said something to him that he felt pressured? No, uh, uh-uh. it came out of nowhere. Okay. He. Um, <laughs> so it's the pressure he's been putting on himself. And remember, we did t- we did tap into his feeling like really burdened by the whole yes. thing a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think he's he's doing the back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, fluctuating between feeling excited about a new adventure and feeling like, you know, he's just really questioning. He's doing the cold feet thing, you know, like, can I really give her what she wants? He's pressuring. He doesn't realize he's put, like putting it on you when he's pressuring himself. He's just totally projecting. So I think okay. if you can just keep your keep your cool and just be like, I didn't think I was pressuring you, you know, like just keep stating the facts. Like I didn't, I haven't even contacted you. So how can I be pressuring you? Like, you know. Well, the, 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 you. Okay. Yeah. He, he has used a similar statement before when she was around. Unless she hasn't left the scene yet and that was something co- happening soon, but... Um, you know, he so, had, he, you know, I can't, before he would say, I can't give you everything you need and want right now. But this time he said, I can't um, give you the singular attention you need. And maybe it is the same way, which leads me back to, well, what the heck do you mean Wait a minute. No. Hang on a second. Okay. Can't give you the singular attention. Can't give you the singular attention. His attention is divided. <clears throat> he must still be taking care of her. It's it's so like a part still... of him is really torn, like wanting to start this new life with you, but knowing that he can't. It's like he he can't he can't do an affair. You know he can't he can't do that. So it's like he. Um, for those listening, he's his his wife is very sick, so it, it's a mm-hmm. it's a it's a unique situation. Um, so she so probably it, hasn't she hasn't um, crossed. Yeah, not yet. She's still not yet. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. know, it's it's inevitable. But it's like I think he's just dealing with guilty feelings. And he's really wanting to get something started with you, but it's like it's like why would he say I couldn't give you singular attention? In other words, exactly. he wants to start something well, now, for, and he wants oh, it to overlap, but he exactly. would feel bad. So, and it, so it made me like you know I'm not going to be. Um, I there's there's a lot to work ahead, but. Um, I just needed to know that. Yeah, it made it really made me go. Well, then, what the heck? You know. Yeah. I don't. Right. Obviously, his feelings have not changed for you. I there's nothing like that. There's no new information here. It's just we read into things like that. You know. Yeah. Um, yes. If fear. I were you, I all would. The, yeah, all your fears are going to come up. I mean, yeah, a, they did. It's, in, Trust it's me. pretty inevitable that. In every twin flame relationship, he always rejects her at some point, either friend zoning her or saying, I'm not interested in you like that, or I don't want to hurt you, or, you know, they they totally full on make you question your faith in the whole thing, always. It's very rare that you meet a twin flame couple where that didn't happen sometime along the line. So right. congratulations, you've just overcome that hurdle <laughs> <laughs> that had to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I had to it, it yes it took some cocktails and just to really regroup with love's intentions instead of fear but it took a lot I was so blue yesterday yeah. until I had a cocktail <laughs> Well and, you know um, honestly I think that's a good thing to mention too because I think you know if you guys got to get drunk sometime or have a few drinks 
to relax or to say your truth or whatever it is, there's nothing wrong with that temporarily. You just don't want to stay in that yeah. space. Yeah. So um, good job taking care of yourself. But I would just, if, um, if I were you, I would just let him know that you love him so much and that and that you just fully in support of him and that you um, didn't, didn't, you know, that you weren't meaning to pressure him in any way and give him lots of space and just be unconditionally loving like you are and just be, you know, to, try not to read into it to where you lash out. You know what I mean? Oh, I did. For I mean, not brutal, but I thought, oh, you want the same setup is why I finally cut it off, and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, and um, because that statement was like, well, wait a minute, I can't go completely backwards. We've got to move forward, and mm-hmm. um, so I, I, I just, uh I had to regroup with love and and then get back to just sending that energy out to him to All right. So I'm going to okay. I'm going to pick 3 cards on how he's feeling right now about what's gone on okay. between you guys. Just for okay. fun. I love cards. They're so fun to play with. What is he feeling about her right now? Considering all of these exchanges. What is he feeling about her? I feel a little wink from the universe. <laughs> I love it when they do that. <laughs> Good, like, don't worry about it. Okay, let's see. Two of Wands, of course. The Magician. And Page of Pentacles. <laughs> and the Queen of Swords. I mean, that pretty much says it all. He's He's daydreaming. He's looking out at this life he wants with you. And he's thinking, you know, that you're his home. You're where he can be real and authentic and vulnerable and he's daydreaming about you and he's wanting to manifest an offer, an offer he might feel guilty about, you know, but he wants to manifest some kind of an offer um, to make things go forward. And, and this could be, I would, it's not even the page of cups. He doesn't even feel like apologizing, but he wants to make an offer. He wants to talk to you, text you, send you a message of some sort. And then at the bottom, oh, there it is. There's the apology, the page of cups. That's funny. <laughs> and then wow. the queen of the queen of swords. He's cutting someone out, having boundaries with somebody, and he's wanting to speak his truth and communicate more. So I would say that page of pentacles is the is also the queen of swords. So he's wanting to talk to you more, and he's wanting to talk to you about maybe what he's what he's dreaming of you guys being able to manifest together. And he's feeling passion for you. I, I get the devil. And the sun card and the lovers. So he's he you make Thanks him feel like a little kid and yeah, and he knows that he can heal this situation and he feels so much passion, yet feels kinda of bad right now and he's ultimately picking you though because he's got the lovers card and that's like choosing the partner, making a big decision on choosing the partner that can stand the rest of your life. He wants to he wants to end his days with you, girl. He does. So <gasps> Thank you. Just let it happen naturally. <laughs> Manifesting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nothing's gone wrong. Nothing's gone wrong. It just can look askew sometimes. Yeah. We all panic. We all panic from time to time. Oh my God, did I just follow him on Instagram? Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Oh God. So, yeah. Let's just. And. Oh, I have to tell you one more thing before I go. I went kayaking this afternoon, and there were dragonflies all over. Oh, my God. That was really cool, yes. See, that's confirmation. If you guys are seeing dragonflies and uh, butterflies and dragonflies, then that reading probably pertains to you. So So go back and watch that collective collective reading. Exactly. Oh, thank you. You made my day. Talk to you later, Amy. Let me do that for you. All right. Talk to you later. I love you, Amy. Bye. Love you, too. Okay. So. Hello? 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 (laughs) Yes. Hi. Oh, I thought there were a couple people ahead of me. I'm so sorry. (laughs) 
Well, there are, but I'm trying to like a couple, uh, like at least one of the callers is, has called before, so I'm putting them a little bit um, further down on the list. And I'm taking you because you're new. Yay. Um, well, this is Hope. You've actually done a couple of Twin Flame check-in readings for me, and I'm so excited okay, cool. to talk to you in person. Yay. Um, I do want to see, we've had a lot of contact, and we actually um, met up last week and had like a really long conversation. Okay. Um, but I don't know if anything has changed really in our dynamic. Like it's still in that third party situation. He still has his marriage that he wants out of, but there's, he's, it's complicated because neither one of them are from the United States, but they both live here. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's not, the marriage is legal here, but not in Spain where he's from and they have property and it's, it's a mess. It's a giant mess. <clears throat> so it's not a simple divorce. Mm-hmm. But Messy. Yeah, I'm not really, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling excited and like we've made all this progress, but at the same time, like, that is still such a huge issue. Has he talked to you at all? Am I what? Has he talked to yeah, you at talking. all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, we talk almost daily. Okay. So what's the question? Our, I just kind of wanted to check in and see if, are we on the path of moving forward or are we falling back into this same situation that we were in a couple months ago? Okay. Let me see. Forward. <clears throat> He's leaving. Fed up. I get the words fed up. Um, I also get the tower card. So the tower is like no longer procrastinating, but sometimes it means like like fate steps in and causes something sudden and unexpected to happen that makes things go forward faster. Okay. I feel like um, money. Maybe he yeah, got a different but, job or maybe he got or maybe he's getting a different job or something like that. I just feel like money and the money issue is getting resolved. The money is definitely an issue. Um and his job actually might be changing. It's, it's all uh kind of up in the air right now to be honest. Well, I think he's going to get a new one soon and I think that's going to be the tower moment he needed. I think it's going to empower him and make him you know, catapult him into what you guys, what you guys have. You know, these guys, these guys, by the time, I don't, I'm trying to figure out like at which point they start. I don't know. At the point that he's at where he's talking to you on a regular basis, I really doubt that he's going to go to some kind of karmic partner. Once you get to a certain point, it's like a point of no return. They also, if they if they do go back to some kind of karmic partner, they just feel like idiots, you know. They just beat themselves up, and they're just like, "What did I do?" You know. Yeah. So I really yeah. doubt he's gonna he's gonna go back to doing something like that, or even stay stale too much longer. The this these eclipse energies um, and full moons and whatnot that have been going on, like obviously full moons happen on a regular basis, but. Um, you know, it's like the, this. This energy is push really pushing people. Fate and and um, God, the universe is really is really pushing people to go forward. So, have faith in that. And he's really going to feel like a fool if he does anything else. <laughs> so, I really doubt he'll do that. Um, and I just saw him. I just saw him like swinging his arms, like I'm after this. Like I'm I'm going to do this. So, <laughs> good. Good. That makes me feel so much better. Good. And then my other question is, I am debating about starting my own business. Um, Okay. And I wanted to get your feelings on that. Um, What kind of business? I do do medical skincare, like uh, Botox and fillers and what have you, but I really want my own type of little spa. Okay. And I'm starting to piece... Yeah, Some of the, it's the all pieces coming together. together of the puzzle. Yep, so I was just gonna say a puzzle. All the pieces are coming together yeah. for the puzzle. No, you're totally. It's it's a really cute little place. It's really small and really cute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's it, exactly it, what I'm looking at. Yeah, it looks like a bo- boutique or something. It like it's, yeah, it's precious. Exactly. 
It's so cute. Oh. It's like people are going to gush when they walk in the door. They're going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is so cute. Yeah, and you're going to make oh. people feel like they're really spoiling themselves to be there. Yeah. So I would yeah. I would have some kind of, <clears throat> I know this sounds really, really kind of stupid, but um, like when I used to go to my dentist office when I was little, they used to have this little treasure chest where you could open it up and there were all these little toys and you got to pick one. <laughs> Oh I my just gosh, you are feeling. so funny. We were talking about that and having little samples of different like products in a little treasure chest. <laughs> Talk about confirmation. I picked on picked up on it again. It's like the universe oh really wants to emphasize that you need to do that. Yeah. Thank you. That's exactly <laughs> well, what I needed to hear today. You're amazing. Everyone loves getting these little gifts, you know, I'm feeling special. It's like, ooh, I got a little yeah, month. I'm still working on it. For you and your unicorn, I had to wait for some pieces to come in, but now I have that, so I'm actually starting a gift for you and your unicorn soon. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I love unicorns; Thank they're awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. You're welcome. All right, have a great night, reader. You too. Mm, bye bye. All right, bye. Um. <clears throat> Hello. 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 <laughs> Amy? Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> My name's Christina. Is, am I on beer? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't yeah. think I'd get through, but yes, they said there would be a beep. Um, <laughs> I'm new to this whole metaphysical world, um, twin flame, all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, But I always knew... There's something to it. Um, I was new. I was intuitive and things like that. Um, but basically getting to the point of what I'm trying to get to is yesterday I had a reading because my energies have just been all over the place. And I had a specific person that we were like friends with benefits, but I knew there was something more. And lately he's been appearing in my dreams, and I don't know if I'm making all this up. Hmm. I don't know what to think because he's still my thoughts, and I don't know if I'm just an obsessed person <laughs> or what's going on. Um, You're, are you still I, friends with benefits? No, we have not talked <laughs> or we have not communicated since January of uh, January 25th of this year. I pretty much had decided, you know, I'm not going to deal with his wishy-washiness and you know just kind of communicated in, in some text that I knew he was being shady at times I know he's a troubled person but I've always tried to give him you know some compassion because I understood he has mm -hmm. some issues mm -hmm. and so he just hasn't reached out we haven't tried to communicate and I'm just I try to let it go but I just wonder where he's at if I'm ever in his thoughts or if I'm making up the stuff with the dreams, because like uh, one of the times I went to visit him, he never really would talk about anything spiritual. I would bring it up. <laughs> and I just noticed like one of the movies he started watching had to do with astral, project astral projection. So I, I just thought that was funny. I'm like, why is he that is really to funny. this stuff? Yes. That's really funny. And, so I, I didn't know if it was just a movie he ran across or if he was actually looking into it. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm making this up or what's going on. Because, like I said, I went to get a reading yesterday, and she was talking about I wouldn't have love this year. Um, she was bringing up male energies that I've dealt with. One was controlling that I just I did cut ties off with uh, completely. And then she described another friend, another male friend. She said, Lou loved me, and I just had to be up front with him. And I've pretty much dealt with that without actually telling him. He knows. Okay. Um, but it's, I felt like she was avoiding because she did tell me I was intuitive and that I had certain uh, healing properties. And I'm, I'm trying to tap into this and learn about it more. But um, I felt like she was avoiding him talking about him so I did bring him up and she just said he's no good for you uh and then well, she see that, 
That right there is the problem. That's why you don't go to people who aren't twin flames. Because they okay. will tell you to drop that guy so fast if he's not responding to you. And they don't get it. They don't understand the journey and what they go through. And I was just right. looking up a book for you. It's about, uh, it's like an ultimate dream book for lovers or ultimate um, re- oh, relationship. It's not lovers. It's relationship by Jillian something. Okay. Um, anyway, there's there's this good dream book that I'm not able to find right now, but I tried. If I find it, I'll put it beneath in the description, okay. and I will find it. But um, so, what when somebody dream when you dream about somebody, a lot of times they're dreaming about you too, right? And it's a way that your your subconscious minds like um, try to see if you guys are compatible. Right. So. If it's a it's a if it's a really good dream, you guys feel really good about what happened in the dream, then it's it's a really good sign. So we, um Yeah. It goes back and forth. Like there's been times where I feel like we're trying to deal with an issue and he gets he gets angry and storms off or one time we were kissing and <laughs> but like he'll pop up and there's still the same feeling that we had when we were dealing with each other. It's like okay. he would push me away, but then we'd always come back together. And yeah, um, I knew so you had you know, issues. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, just so you know, too, while you were while I was talking about that, I yes. just played around with some cards and I flipped over the deck, and it was the it was the four of wands, and it's that's all about that's a some readers consider that to be the twin flame twin flame signifier. Um, another, it's about marriage. It's about stability. It's about things like becoming more stable and building a foundation. And then I got the Knight of Pentacles right underneath that too, which is about slowly going forward in a in a careful way. Yeah. So I think what you're dealing with as a twin flame sounds like one to me. And you're gonna have that back and forth dynamic for you know, for a while until both of you have to have a certain level of maturity and a certain level of being able to take personal responsibility in order yes. to make it work and stick. Yes. So that's, that's, that's what you're dealing with. That's what I'm trying to confirm is if, if he is a twin flame, because I strongly feel he is, and I felt like she was trying to avoid that, like just saying he's no good for you and trying to point me in a different direction about how I'll marry somebody else who's, opposite of what he is and <laughs> well they're funny and too I, because I, the other I readers that don't her. understand uh, uh, other readers that don't understand the whole twin flame thing they will mm. even port, point you right into the arms of a karmic oh there's right. a new guy on the scene and he's super attentive and he's going to take you on all these dates and all this stuff and it's just like uh, to me that's like ding 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 red flag red flag because I mean, sometimes that sometimes a true love relationship can go very fast, but sometimes these are manipulators, you know. Right. Um, so you really got to know, know what you're he, doing and who right, you're going to. I know to. he had, he was bad. I guess we could say. Um, so the last time we saw each other was September 11th. I didn't. He, we arranged to meet up because he actually lived in different states. So I would go visit him. I was always the one initiating things. Um, but then this time, he, we made a date, and he decided, all of a sudden, he popped. He's just like, he changed it. And then he's like, I'm coming to Tennessee now. And he, you know, he just, and that was September 11th, and he showed up, and he, it's like he couldn't even look me in the eye. I knew he wasn't telling me a lot of things. Um but it was like an urgency. And even the mm-hmm. next morning, I could feel he just, there were things he wanted to say, and I hugged him, but he, like, pushed me away. And I just, okay. I didn't know. Yeah. you got to watch a bunch more videos on my channel. <laughs> right. Because I thought, this is so common, all of it. It's very common for these guys. Um, so it's they really, they do a lot of growing up. I mean, they do a lot of, like, you guys, when you meet, it's so magnetic and you keep pulling back to each other because of the intensity and the passion and all of that. 
and you will keep that magnetism going is it's meant to grow you guys ultimately it's just meant to grow you guys so right. it's there for a reason it doesn't mean you're going to be with them it doesn't mean you know just because they're a twin flame doesn't mean you're going to be with them right. um but it it is there to to help you grow and to give you to grow you through desire to grow you right. through passion to grow you through comparison to you know in so many different right. ways to to realize how you think that you're kind of worthless or insecure about what you you know what you think is wrong with you that somebody else wouldn't love and to look at that and to doubt tarot cards and to doubt, you know there's so right. many things that you doubt and that you are afraid of and that you you know you hear five different psychics say five different messages and you're like what the hell do I do I think and what do I do and it's like you're just being trained to listen to your own heart and your own intuition so right. it's all just a journey and at some point, if you're fed up with his behavior, don't tolerate it. You know, this doesn't, it, this it, isn't a journey of, of tolerate bad behavior. It's more like, right. let them, let them grow and mature through the years. And if you're still around, then great. If not, then you've found somebody better because you will always find somebody, somebody better right. if you hold out, if you're not being treated right and you're raising your vibration and you're staying a happy person. You're gonna draw to you somebody, somebody incredible. So right. this isn't your like one egg in your basket, right? So but don't worry I, about it. I do want to know: should I reach out to him? Because she just said the only thing you could do for him is pray that, you know, pray that God reaches him, or, um, and that's pretty much what she told me. And I just, I don't know if I should reach out to him at all or just. You know, I, I'm being stubborn, too. I'm like, I'm not going to contact him. <laughs> it's been, mm-hmm. I, and that's been since January. Um, mm-hmm. I won't reach out to him. And and every time I want to, I'm like, I, I'm i not, you know, according to the, the Divine Feminine, I'm not supposed to if I'm in my power. But mm-hmm. I don't, I'm still not sure what to do. Because <laughs> I, I keep thinking yeah. about him. Okay, so just if you feel like it, it never, ever, ever hurts to express your heart. Ever. Right. And I've so, always done that. Good. If you feel so compelled, just let him know you're thinking of him. You know, call him, leave him a voicemail, send him a text, whatever. Don't hound him, obviously. But if it's right. like every once in a in a great while, um, you want to just let him know that you care, then fine. Um, you can send him a blessing. You can send pink energy surround him with pink energy send him tons of love and let him know that you're thinking of him and that you support him that you believe in him that you know just send him some loving messages he'll feel it um and yeah if you want to if you want to pour your heart out and do a big long email do it just again don't don't have any expectations of him saying anything back right just, and that, you got to do it for your sake, for, to be within integrity for yourself, to do, to challenge yourself to do something that was difficult to do, you know. But to have right. said, you can, you can walk away from that saying, you know, what? I tried my absolute best, right. and then you can move on. So, but I, you've confirmed through the cards, but so do you feel he does he even think about me? Does he? Mm-hmm. Did I mean anything oh, yeah. to him? Oh gosh, yes, all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. He beats himself up over with you. It's like I see him using you as a doll and whacking himself over the head. Bam, 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 bam. It's like he's <laughs> he's making himself feel really bad using you um, as his little yeah. doll, his little voodoo doll, banging himself up over the head with you. But um, he'll get over that. He'll grow up. He'll grow up. But. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't wait. I'm not, I'm not big on waiting, <laughs> you know. Right, right, right. Just because okay. I think it's an uncomfortable energy and it gets depressing. Right. And, you know. Well, that's what I don't, I don't want to put them in an uncomfortable energy. And I guess that's, you know, should I move on? Of course I know I can date other people. I'm just not that type of person. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel... A lot with many people. I just mm-hmm. don't. I'm very picky, and I if I don't feel it, it's just not there. 
Okay, so then just just be happy and um, you know distract yourself with tons of activities and have a good time and learn new things and go to new places and you know make the best of your life and try to put him out of your head as best you can. So you're saying just, I mean, in a nutshell, I should just move on. Mhm. You don't have a choice. <sighs> okay. Until so he, he until he's out. willing. Yeah, and will, until he's willing to partic- participate in your life, there's nothing you can really do except torture okay. yourself and make yourself feel miserable. Right. Be at. Right. So that kind of sucks. Well, well, and I don't have time for that. So no, <laughs> there's other does. people I need to, to heal as well as myself. So Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like I feel like he's going to feel a lot better in a couple months for some reason, and he might reach out to you and apologize, so... We'll see. So should I at least send him the message uh, just to let him, so that I'm not stubborn and I'm not acting for my ego? And, yeah. Uh, and just, Leave the door open. Yeah. Leave some kind okay. of message. Let him know that, that he, he would be comfortably received, that you're not okay. going to, I don't know, claw his eyes out or something <laughs> if he right. comes to you. And, <laughs> and I never would, because like, uh, like she said, I do attract guys who are troubled. I've done that all my life, but I knew they were all lessons. I just somehow mm-hmm. always knew that. Mm-hmm. So we managed to be friends most of the time. Uh, okay. The best thing, right. the best thing you can possibly do, your best weapon, is to stay totally present in the moment, and to just that's where your real power comes from is that vulnerability of being in the moment, totally surrendered with life. Okay. Trust life. And that's when you're going to bring the best person to you. Yes. Cool. And I trust you. That's why I wanted to get through. (laughs) Cool. Great. All right. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Bye. Bye. Hello, Amy. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, hey, can you hear me? Okay. A little bit. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can. Good. Well, I just wanted. Um, oh, I know who this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I say that? I know. Uh, well, I'm, call- I'm calling for an energy scan. <laughs> <What? laughs> I'm calling for an energy scan, but I want to offer a confirmation. Years ago, when we first met, um, I'd moved back into Colorado and I was needing to get a job. And you said that you saw me working in an office and I was really nicely dressed and working like with a lot of different professionals, and and that actually came true. So yeah. Hey. Yes. Are you enjoying yeah, it? Well, oh no, not now. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a new one. Oh. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on the, I'm, I'm on the path for a new job. And um, you mentioned last time I had a reading that uh, somebody by with the first letter of T in their name would be the one to really help me. And I ran into Terry last night and we talked. She goes, absolutely. Um, she's she's going to help facilitate getting my resume out and introduce me to uh, some companies that, that would be looking for somebody with my skill sets. Awesome. Uh, hey, I get a yeah. huge hug. Yeah, she's a great lady. Cool. I like her. A lot Very of fun. Abs. Mm-hmm. So I'm calling for an energy scan. Um, okay. I recently broke out in a a rash on my face, like it looked like chicken pox. Okay. Um, also, ha- that has now subsided. Um, a horrible UTI that I'm dealing with. Okay. And it's like, <laughs> um, and I think something else came up that I had to deal with, but it, it's like, wow, why am I dealing with all of these? Oh, I had a growth on my nose that was removed. Benign, thank God. Um, 
just multiple stuff. Okay. So, you know, I've listened to that one about curses and and about, you know, if other people put something on you. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of random how many things I've had to deal with in a short amount of time. Okay. All right, hang on. Uh, first thing I get is the word chi, like you need more chi running through your body. You're kind of depleted. You're running on fumes right now. So there okay. is a protective layer of your system that's getting real, real thin because you're you're too stressed and doing too much. Um, okay. So let me check again. Hmm. What do we have here? The UTI thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I feel like there's... There is? Who is this coming from? Who would this be coming from? What is... It feels like... I know this is going to sound really weird, but it feels like hatred for feminine parts. And... (laughs) I know, I know, I know. We've dealt with your breasts before. <laughs> and now we're going down south. Um, it, uh-huh. it just feels like, I don't know, it, it almost has the feeling of it coming from somebody else's belief system. Like me, it almost is like somebody rejecting you being female. Like maybe one of your parents were anticipating you were going to be male or something. And maybe that like sunk in subconsciously and has made you reject that in some ways. It's really bizarre energy. Let me let me see what happens when I start to remove it. Let me see what else I can get here. Your boobs look fine, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is from childhood. This is way back. It's like comparing yourself to others in 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 a mother it's a, I keep coming feeling a mother how was your relationship with your mom growing up um we were pretty close i was i was the whoops so i'm the last of six children okay um, and mom pretty much you know is her little sidekick <laughs> um and of, and of course were being they a teenager no, uh uh-uh. No, there's three boys um, in my family and then two twin sisters and then myself. So there, it oh, went three and three. That, um, they said it's a projection. I think it maybe happened to your mother and the energy got transferred to you. This is so bizarre. This is residual. This is past life stuff. What? This is like some kind what? of like, I know. This is like, this is, this is like, oh, 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 I know what this is. This is, um. What do they call the stuff that gets passed down through generation? It's like a generational, genetic, a generational like, thing, like um, past lives having to do with your families and what your families have been involved with, like past actual, like physical lives mm-hmm. through the generations of your family, like passed down. It's some residual energy that you're here to to cleanse and clear for the entire family. Like clearing this right now is clearing it for everybody going way back through history, in regards to this subject of like. Rejecting the 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 feminine, rejecting being feminine. Interesting. I feel like farms and stuff, like working really hard. Like they wanted got a lot back way back. Like they wanted boys in the family because they would work really hard on the farm, and it would be like a dis- disappointment to have a girl. So let me just um, balance out this well, energy that, for a minute. Let me yeah? give you a quick confirmation. I grew up on forty acres with cattle and horses and. Um, part of the field was dedicated for haying. And um, being the youngest and the smallest, I I got out of a lot of those chores because I just wasn't big enough to do the hay bales. Oh. And then, um, yeah, yeah. And then as I got older, it was too much just for my dad and I, so um, he ended up hiring that portion out, like a gentleman's farmer, if you want to call it that. Yeah, mm-hmm. How, how so are I you never, feeling right now? Are you getting are you getting tingles anywhere? 
Well, when you were talking, I was kind of getting the chills. I'm actually out walking on okay. an interpath. Oh, um, nice. Little, okay. Yeah. We nice. need to go for a walk sometime. Okay. You too. So let me do a blessing on you real quick. The energy has cleared. Wait, there's a little bit of residual on the bottom here. What's going on there? Anger. Anger at man and how they've treated you. There's that com- combined in it. I think we talked about that one before. <laughs> Yeah, there's just a little bit left, a little bit left unhealed. If I were you, I would go through and do that exercise of thank you God for my misery. Go mm-hmm. back through some of the some of the bad things that some of these guys have done to you, and be like thank you God that that happened, and then list ten to fifteen advantages or benefits as to why that was a really good thing that that happened to help you have help you make peace with it, help you um, to accept what's happened. When you accept it, it can change. Believe it or not, okay. fighting against something keeps it the same. But if you can accept it and be like, it is what it is, you know, I can see the benefit in it. I can see how life was actually supporting me through something I thought that was a negative thing. And then you can break, you can make, uh, have some epiphanies and things as a result. Okay, so let me just okay. do a blessing for you. Anybody who who is listening, this is also a live energy that can also help heal you and whatever's going on with you too. So set your intention right now. You don't need to, but maybe those who are listening um, later, um, set your intention on what you want me to work on in this, and it'll go there. Okay. Hai mo konsa, hale shikitsa na pokona, hale kitsi sena mo kai, hale etsa nsa ne puku, hashe sena la kri tensan, habo konchon sona tetela. Okay. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, quick update. The yep. person I'm dating that lives in the same town you are, um, <laughs> possibly an SM. Can't quite okay. figure out which one he is. But the DM's been coming around. <laughs> we actually went on a Ooh. hike last weekend. Whoa. We, yeah, we took our dogs on a hike. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And of course. Well, wow. so girls got options. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's kind of like what I figured by the time the relationship keeps developing where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a choice. You know? Yeah, I've been kind of predicting that in the collective readings, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's going to take a while for the the DM to be able to move forward at least another year. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get some choices. That can be tough. It was just a shocker. Yeah, it was a shocker. You know, just reached out. You want to go for a hike? I'm like, uh, yes. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I am pretty darn curious about right now. <laughs> yeah. Do tell. And, um, yeah, and hopefully by maybe September we're going to try to do a 14er. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's we're right. together as a team. Whether in a yeah. relationship or not, it's, it's, it's an awesome thing if you can get to work with your twin flame as a team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. So. We'll Good see. luck. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep okay. you posted. Putting, but I've been putting out some videos that could be helpful too in trying to make a choice as to which one to go with long term. Yeah. Okay. All right. You have a beautiful night. Thanks. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. You can, hey, are you there? Okay. Text me. I'm sorry. Here. You can text me some, uh, text me some of these updates if, if they're encouraging like that. I'll put them on Instagram. Oh, absolutely, could really especially yeah. about, yeah, about what the healing you just did and then also on the job factor. Um, your oh, last yeah. prediction, it took, it took a couple yeah. of months, but, um, you know, everything you saw came came true. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'll keep you well, posted. I mean, I love testimonials, but also it's like a lot of feminines are are, are still being ghosted. So um, it, it would be encouraging them for them to hear that your twin flame finally reached out after all this time and wanted to go on a hike. So, yeah, hey. 
Yeah. All right. Have yeah. a beautiful night. Enjoy Thank this you. gorgeous sunset. It's, it's like it's so beautiful out right now. I am. I'm. I'm out quite a bit east of I-25, so I have the full range of the mountains. Ooh, it's gorgeous. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was out there so. earlier today, up in the mountains. It was really neat. Uh huh. All right. Um, Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Okay, there's two more of you, and then we're going to call it a day. Thank you for waiting so long. Are you there? Hello? Okay. (laughs) They waited all that time and then left. Okay. One more caller. Hello? Oh, my goodness. Okay, there we go. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Hi. Okay. Um, Hi. I am going to keep it kind of brief and kind of anonymous. Awesome. (laughs) Maybe you know who it might be. (laughs) Yeah. um, Yeah. It always seems around this time. But, um, yeah, we hung out last night. (laughs) You did? Yeah. Yay. How'd it go? Uh, it was it was nice. I mean, but but I think things got a little bit too quick, too fast, and I'm a little concerned right now. Okay. About what yeah. aspect? About things going too fast? Yeah, like possible um um unplanned pregnancy could be in the works or something like that. <laughs> so I'm Ooh. a little bit, yeah, really, like. It's a great reminder to use protection. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean. All right. Yeah. Okay. I don't All know right. if Let you have see. any insight on that. I mean, it, it's been a day, so I don't know. And I'm just like. I don't think you are. Okay. <laughs> At least I'm not picking up on it. It could be too early to tell, but nah. I mean, energetically, I'd be able to pick up on it beforehand. Nah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's going on. But a good reminder. Good reminder. <laughs> okay. Um. Really, that's all you wanted to know. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. I, let me. It, uh, like it would change everything. I feel, and like, I'm like, well, what if that was to happen? Like, that would be a big deal. Like, everything would just. I was like, I um, huh. will change your world all around. <laughs> I'm like, well, that, yeah, no that would be it. That, yeah, no, sometimes even a false alarm can be a really good, you know, a good thing. So the cards that I pulled were like Ace of Cups, brand new love, starting a new love, yay. And then Six of Wands and Eight of Wands, they are, things are going fast, but it's in a way that's going to make you feel victorious and successful. Um, the Moon is just about these insecurities and fears. It can also be something hidden that makes things go forward fast too. So, <laughs> exactly. um, I mean, it, it could be, but I don't, um, I don't know. Being that you feel victorious, I would say that you, you know, whatever result you would want is probably the answer. So if you would want to get pregnant, then you might be, if you would be relieved that you're not, then you're probably not. That's what I would say. But you guys definitely are doing, you know, you're loving yourselves and things are going forward quickly, but I think that it's a really good thing. It's a positive thing. And I think you guys are overcoming some insecurities and things. Good. That's good to know. Well, that's how I feel. I just, that really concerns me. Good. So, yeah. I guess we'll, we'll, I'll have to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I keep getting a no every time I check in, so... Okay. Hopefully that's the answer you wanted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, let, wait, hang on. They want to the tell you something else. Okay, they want to tell you something else. Let me see. Well, I just saw you guys kiss. Um, obviously, you guys have been doing that. Um, I just think that that just means like more more intimate than it's been before. I think you guys are going taking it to a whole other level. It's, it feels beautiful. It feels like a really nice connection. And I don't really sense anybody running anytime soon. So that's good. Um, I mean, a little bit of back and forth, but not like totally like total ghosting. Um, 
it feels it feels like it's more mature than it's ever been. It's at a level it's never been at before. So I think it's I think you're going in the right direction. I think you're about officially in union. Yeah. <laughs> it's a state of being and I'm happy with whatever curveballs life throws at me. It's just that would be a little bit awesome. Worrisome because it would be yeah. a little bit Outside, like it's like I would be repeating past lessons and things, and I don't would oh. never want to put that on him. So yeah, I don't know what's the concern that like in my boom space I'm feeling right now. That's really what I'm like, like a weird sensation, and have I haven't felt in a long time. I'm like, could it did have you been go get it? Did you go get a day after pill or whatever? Yes. Okay, you guys are definitely you're definitely starting a family. I'm just not sure if it's now. But you're definitely starting that long-term family now. So. Now? <laughs> I mean, the two of you. <laughs> the two of you I, I are starting that family now, between the two of you. Okay. I don't, okay. I don't know what that means. Well, you guys are in union. You guys are starting a relationship taking it to another level. It's, you guys are on your way well, on your on your way. I got the um I got the wifey card, so you guys are headed toward marriage. Yeah, I just want to If that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. I wouldn't want to do anything to have to speed that up cuz I think it's just a right. be- beautiful process. I'm like, I don't I don't really want to have to that would just put me back to square one and I would never want that with him. And it's something well, I never wanted to. Like, why would the universe make me do that? Like, that would be bad. I mean, obviously, we both had our choices last night, but it was just... Okay. So here's what you do. (laughs) So you hang up with me, go grab a pad of paper, and put, thank you, God, that I'm pregnant. Now, I know you're not. I feel like you're not. But I want you to get prepared for it anyway, because that's just the healthy way to deal with things. Thank you, God, that I'm pregnant. Or thank you, God, that I'm scared that I'm pregnant. You could put that, because that's true. Um, and then you list 10 to 15 advantages or benefits as to why that that's a, that would be a really great thing that that happened right now. There's confirmation. <laughs> Nala agrees. And that that way it'll help you get out of that fear and it'll help you feel like like embrace it if you need to. It, you know, it'll just get you in a in a better space and more clear. Because if you're in fear, you're going to make silly decisions or, or like, like you're going to be more apt to um, react rather than respond. Yeah, which is kind of how I felt about last night, that I, like, was a little bit disorganized, which tends to happen. And that's actually caused, like, our first separation ever was disagreement on this topic. Like, oh, we can't even get intimate with each other because we know that could happen, you know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, you guys are maturing, so you'll figure it out. Just keep just keep learning. Keep making it about learning. You know, take personal responsibility and keep putting it back on yourself and seeing the, whatever, the, whatever, that, whatever the things you guys are fighting about, take a look at how that's showing you something that you need to see instead of, you know, pointing a finger at each other. What is that healing in me or what is that showing me? Do that exercise with everything you can, everything that you that you're upset about or used to be upset about. It comes in pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God, that we fought about organizing or about money or about whatever. And see why that's a good thing. You're always being supported. Always. No matter what thing looks bad or looks like it's going wrong, it's always supposed to have happened. <laughs> You know, even even seeming mistakes. I mean, even sometimes when I'm in these readings, I just things come flying out of my mouth, and I'm like, "Whoa, that wasn't what I meant to say." And then, um, like always, <laughs> those mistakes are exactly what they needed to hear, and they're right on. And here I'm thinking they're mistakes. I've gone, I've done that exercise myself with every bad thing I've ever had happen to me in my life, and cleaned it all up that way. And I did, I did, I sat down for an hour with a little candle lit and I just did it on everything, everything bad that's ever happened to me mm-hmm. and everything that was current at that time. And after I had turned the page, like probably eight to 10 of those exercises, you know, 
I just started laughing and laughing, and I was like, oh, my gosh, after all that time thinking I had been plagued for years or all this stuff had, you know, that I'd just been beat up by the universe for years, it was like I felt kind of foolish. I was like, oh, my God, it was all in support of me. It was all to make me stronger yeah. and agree. freer and, and have a sense of humor. And so That's how I feel about a lot of things up to this point. I'm like, well, it all makes sense. Maybe mm-hmm. I didn't like the outcomes at the time, but it's like ultimately it's helping you along your journey and you, you know, become this beautiful flower. You just, you know, it's part of... You need fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> and fertilizer stinks when you're spreading it around. Okay, my dear. Are we good? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. I really don't, I'm not picking up on anything. I think you're okay. But um, I would go get tested or something. I don't know. I don't know much about that kind of thing. But get tested whenever you think you should just to make sure so that your mind can be in ease and you can get some sleep. And do that exercise in the meantime just in case you do that. That way you got all your bases covered. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. Use protection, you guys. <laughs> Use protection. Okay. It's been a lovely evening. Thank you so much. So much. There's an angel coming through. Somebody named Titan. There's an angel named Titan that's coming through. I've never even heard of Titan. What are you saying? He's feeling like he's just kind of encouraging you guys to be like strong and empower yourselves. It's like he's just, he just seems to be, he's kind of a, he kind of seems um, like some type of a warrior. And he's just, he's just saying, you know, be, be tough. Let this journey make you tough. Don't let it make you weak. Don't let it break you down. Those of you still in separation, don't get down. Don't get down about it. Um, just go out and, and go go have a good time. You know, just make the best of your life and forget about this person as best you can and just open yourself up to anything being possible. And and uh, from what I've been, you know, coming up with lately and predicting for people, your dreams are about to come true. You're going to have some really beautiful, miraculous moments to come. So do not be discouraged. Um, there is a new dawn up ahead for you guys and some really beautiful things coming through. So lift your chin up and go have a good time and have some drinks on me. (laughs) And send me a picture of you having some drinks and clinking some glasses, you guys. I'd love to see that. All right. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you next time on The Satori Show.